So now we've added our turret and now the next step is to add some interactivity. So the turret has a Canon system already added to it, right? This is a C-sharp script. I can show it to you super fast. Uh, basically super simple script. When this public function is called, fire projectile. If we can't shoot, we return. And then otherwise we just instantiate the projectile prefab and add force in the direction of the gun uh, using rigidbody.addForce and we play a fire animation on the turret, right? And then we just do a little cool down. We say can shoot equals false, invoke a cool down. So we can just delay the call to this function, right? For the length of our uh, cool down, which in this case is one second. And then we're gonna set can shoot to true again and then we can shoot, right? So. Super simple little shooting script there. That's already provided, it's already written. And the only reason I wanna show it is because we're gonna call that fire projectile function from our AR button. So let's add in some more stuff. So in our prefabs folder, we have two things to make up this button. We have the fire canvas. And what the, that's not how that's supposed to, oh, oh, of course, this happened to me last time too. It's Z fighting, I thought it was like, flipped around. So what we're getting there, I don't know if we can see it, there's a little flickering going on, right? And that is because this is a world space canvas and it was like exactly on top of the quad with the astronaut image. So we're just gonna bump it up. Let's just make it like 0 0.01 so it doesn't Z fight, right? Um, if you ever see that flickering, uh, in this case it's Y fighting, right? It's not actually Z. If you ever see that flickering, it's because two objects are too close together, right? And the renderer can't tell which one it should draw on top of the other. It looks really ugly. And so what we're gonna do now, so this is a world space canvas, right? And this is something that you see a lot in XR content, right? Where you don't really wanna stick in, in VR or AR, you don't wanna stick UI elements to the camera, right? It's gonna be right in the player's face and it's gonna feel unpleasant, right? So we see a lot more of what we call diegetic UI, right? Objects that look like they're in the world. And a world space UI canvas is the way to do this, right? So instead of uh, rendering in screen space, we're rendering in world space. So this has uh, a place in the world, right? And if we move the, uh, if we move the whole object, it's going to move with it. Okay. This button or this, this image is actually just a display, right? We're going to use this fire button Vuforia prefab, which I'm gonna drag in. And I'm gonna make this a child of the top level. I had an issue where this was getting stuck in the middle for some reason. And so if it was, oh no, wait, I need to. Oh yeah, that's in the right place. It just looks like it's not. Okay, good. Um, and so this is just another little shape here. And this is going to detect the area in which our button is actually gonna be triggered, right? So this is another, object from the Vuforia samples uh, that we're taking and reusing, right? So let's just take a look at what we have here. We have the virtual button behavior, right? This is gives it a name and a sensitivity setting. Again, we have this turn off behavior, right? Which is gonna turn off the renderer and the collider and the canvas. Uh, we'll see that code, in a, well, actually, we'll see it later on in the other script. And the mesh renderer, obviously. And the down here, this is where things get interesting, right? We have this custom Vuforia button script. Now, if you've worked with Unity's UI, you will know this looks familiar, right? If you've worked with buttons in Unity before, we have these on-click event fields in buttons, right? And this is set up to work in just the same way, right? So we have on press, on hold, and on release. So we're gonna use on press and on release, and we're gonna do two things. We're gonna fire our projectile, and we're gonna provide some visual feedback, right? So that the player knows that they successfully interacted with the button. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the button red while it's pressed and then back to this lovely teal color uh, when it is not pressed. So let's set that up. So the first thing we need to do is get a reference to our fire function, right? So we're gonna grab the turret, which has the Canon script attached to it, drag it into the on press, the top on press field, and then, we're gonna choose the function that we wanna call, right? So we're gonna go down to Canon system and we're gonna call fire projectile, right? And this is gonna call that function that I showed you in the script earlier. Next, we are going to change the material of our fire button. So we're just gonna drag that in 
and we're going to select the image component of this, right? And if we look at this, this is this component here. And so we're going to change its material. Currently the material is UI button. We're going to change it and then we're going to change it back. So let's go back to our button. And so here we're going to choose the image and we're going to go to material and we're going to specify what we want to set this to. So we're going to choose a, I'm just going to search for UIB and that's going to be the UI button pressed material, right? Which is red. Now, once we've done that, we want to switch back once we release, right? So we're going to do the same thing in on release. We're going to grab the fire button, drag it in, image, material, and this is going to, I think it just defaults to the right one, which is UI button, right? So if it doesn't, just make sure you put in that UI button and that's the teal colored material, right? So we're going to turn red and then we're going to turn back to teal uh, once we're done firing. So now we can enter play mode and test. And whoop, I knocked it off. This is like a little awkward for me to reach. Pew, pew, pew. There we go. Okay. And there we go. All right. I'm like reaching around my microphone. Great. So it works. So now we can see that we can add AR interactable elements to our scene uh, in order to make this a little bit more game-like, right? It's not just a display now. We actually can interact with it. We can move the stuff around. We can shoot. Uh, and that's super fun. So the, we need, now that we have some shooting, we need a target to shoot at. So let's just quickly set that up. We're going to go to prefabs, drag in another target template, right? And in this case, let's take it and let's just rip, move it over. And we're going to set the image to the drone. There we go. And so now that is going to look for the drone image. And we're just going to drag in, let's, oh, and we should label these two. We're going to drag in this probe artwork, and this has a target script on it that's going to deactivate it after it's hit. It'll go flying and then it'll get deactivated. So let's label this. This is going to be drone target, and this will be turret target. And then we can give this a test. Okay. Boop. And the, the camera is like backwards, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm like, there we go. Amazing. Okay, so it's, it's like trying to, you know, comb your hair in a mirror or something. No, that's actually a terrible example because combing your hair is easy, right? The camera's facing the wrong way, so I'm like trying to reach my arms in. I don't know which way they're going. Maybe that's just me. Okay, so now... We've got our shooting behavior in there. We've got our drone to shoot at. Uh, we've got our fire button display that we can change colors. And the next step is going to just be adding in a little bit of additional scripted behavior to this system, just so that we can see uh, how that works in this context. Can Vuforia and ARKit run simultaneously? I have some plain detection from ARKit in my project. I wanna add Vuforia image tracking to that as well. I believe that they can now min Minhas, uh, but Vuforia is also supporting ground planes now. So you might be able to get what you want from just Vuforia. It might be worth a try, it might be easier. I would look at that. Yes, as Vinny answers, you can do cross-platform markerless with Vuforia ground plane. And that's one of the new things that's been added. So definitely check that out. C Strachan asks, so touch real life, what about on screen, like on mobile, touch screen to fire as well? Yeah, I mean, that's probably easier, right? You could just create a virtual button on the mobile screen that's not in the AR layer, right? You could raycast from the, the camera to objects in the scene based on touches, right? Just like you normally would do trying to interact with a 3D scene with the mouse, basically the same. That wouldn't be anything AR specific as far as I can think. Say so 532 asks, can you place a terrain on top of the image target? Yeah, I think you could. The only thing that would be a little bit, I mean, I guess I have some ideas about how AR should be, right? I don't think you want to completely block out the real world, right? You want to, well, I guess it depends. I think part of the fun and magic of AR is seeing augmented content overlaid over the real world. 
So a terrain probably would take up a lot of the camera space. So 